What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, One Piece is a show that I have been hearing a lot about. You have seen it. I saw one episode. I saw it with my son. Uh, I was falling out, not because the show was whack. It's because I wake up mad early every day <laughs> on purpose, and I just can't hang it anymore. Uh, but I intend to watch it again. But Brian, you uh, have enjoyed this show quite a bit. Um, you even went back to see the animated version of this. Mm -hmm. uh, could you let us know your thoughts? I so it's funny we 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 spent time talking about uh, the superhero genre, comic book adaptations. But you know the the show is called the Nerd Generation, and that kind of spans a lot of different content. And I would submit. This show, in many ways, is the spirit of superhero and comic book adaptations. When you see it, when you see the visuals, when you see the storytelling, it's based on Ichiro Odo's um, Japanese manga series, which he created in the late 1990s. It's one of the longest running and most famous and um, best selling um, both comics and ultimately came a long running anime show. I had not seen any of that anime. I didn't come at this show with any familiarity other than just what I told you, that very basic backdrop. And some of it's out there. Like when I was watching it, I was like visually for a show that's ostensibly about pirates and treasure. I was like, whoa, these, these, these characters look different. The ships look crazy, like the hair, the costumes. Yeah. So by the end of this season, and I do, and it's a season. I think this is must must watch TV. I think this is a oh, five wow. star show. Wow. I think you will get sucked in by the acting, the chemistry of the cast. And then after it was done, I went back because Netflix was feeding me the actual anime. They were putting it in the queue and I started to watch some of it. And then it blew my mind because I realized this show did something we have been begging Marvel and DC to do for years. And it did it perfectly, which is why I really want to talk about it. Cause I feel like this show actually is got so many fingerprints that I think Marvel and DC could learn a lot from. Mm -hmm. So that's the tagline five-star show must watch. Once you get into it, you will rip through the episodes. I think the cast is great. I think some of the action is great. Um, it is crazy. Like if some of it is truly superhuman and that's the point, right? It's, that's what it's based on, but I think it's addictive. Um, and I, and the one thing I give Netflix a lot of credit for is, and this is where I like to start. Netflix tried anime manga adaptations before that failed. Most notably Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. yeah. I was looking forward People to seeing that. And I, hated, and I saw it. Yeah. Hated yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. But Netflix stuck with it. They didn't give up on the idea. Mm -hmm. And they got some good creators in this one. They got the creator himself involved. Ichiro Oda was involved in the making of this, which I think is significant. He nailed the casting. And now they have something which has been their most watched program for the last 30 days and is a massive hit. And I think I just read they're already talking about trying to go 12 seasons with this. So we'll see. Wow. With Netflix never goes more than four. So there's already talk they might try for that. But anyway, it's an amazing show. Um, and and I think you'll like it. I think your son will like it. it it's definitely more mature because the, an the anime is more mature than like your average cartoon. The, the show is more mature. This is R rated. There's some R rated content in the show. Um, so it's not really for like little kids necessarily, but like kids of a certain age will eat it up and i think adult adults will too mm -hmm. um but anyway so why 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 the superhero application well first off the characters are superhuman to some extent mm -hmm. you probably if you saw the one episode you probably already saw monkey d luffy our protagonist mm -hmm. i don't know what you thought but i thought reed richards immediately when i saw the effects me too I said, how are they, how they going to compete? How are they going to make this look any different or any better? Or how will it make it, us feel when we watch it? It's just going to be another guy that can stretch. Yeah, I can stretch. So that was the first thing. And then you get introduced to like Roro Norizoro, sort of like he's your samurai warrior, but he's got to like superhuman skills. I will, you haven't seen the show. I won't spoil it. There's others who can fight 
just as well, if not well, as he can. So that there's some, there's at least one pretty epic sword fight that he has later in, in the season. Um, so again, you and then you you haven't you haven't seen it, but you'll meet the cook, like who of the crew is basically a martial artist, um, and it does a lot of wire work in his fight scenes. So these are comic book style effects, except there's very little CGI in the show. Every set, every city, every ship, they built it. I watched the behind the scenes. They spent a ton of money, literally, on this show, and it looks awesome. Like I don't, I, I, I don't know what the budget was, but like when they did the tour, like the, the, the full scale ships are built. They're real. Like the town that's floating in the sea later in the season, it's real. Like it exists. So Netflix did not use the volume for a single shot of this show, which is kind of amazing when you see what's in this show. Um, but the genius of it, which I didn't understand at all, is that a lot of the set pieces and a lot of the most important scenes in this show are literally note for note from the manga and the anime. That's the thing you don't know when you're watching it. And when you go back and you see the original scene, the way it was drawn, and then you realize they literally recreated it in live action and it looks awesome. I was like, I mean, DC, how long have we asked them? Just go to your animated catalog and remake it. You don't have to rewrite it. It's right. The genius is right there. This show did it and people loved it. And whether you knew it was doing that or not, didn't matter. I love the shots. And then when I saw that the shots were literally from every angle, every word of dialogue, every flourish with the special effects was literally a note for note recreation of something that Oda had drawn and they had put in the anime. It blew my mind that, there's, that, they, that they did it and did it that well. It's dope that we can see creators visualize and do things that make us believe that the things that are happening are happening in the world, that it's believable. I think, Brian, not to go off on a tangent, but to sort of put what One Piece has done along with what the creator of the film has done. If you've heard about the movie, Brian, the creator, oh, I've I'm seen thinking it. about $86 million. And it looks like that. It looks like a billion dollars. Like, I, I, yeah. Well, Gareth Edwards, listen, man, I, that guy's visual skills are incredible. Godzilla, Rogue One, even Monsters, his first, that guy knows how to make a lot out of a little. Yeah, the creator, yeah. It's, an, it's an incredible looking movie. It's not a perfect movie, but it's an incredible yeah. looking movie. Yeah, but <clears throat> these are some of the things that we've asked for for quite some time that is right there for you. Stop trying to add your own vision to something that it's there. All you have to do, these are storyboards for you. Yeah. What are we doing here? You own them. Do it. Instead of changing it, why? We, I think all of us could agree, Brian. If you would have made Flashpoint Paradox the way it was done, two billion. I'll, I'll bet two billion. If you took the four episodes from Question Authority to Divided We Fall and just literally note for note redid that? Absolutely. That's a $2 billion box office movie. But we have individuals who are, who believe themselves to be visionaries themselves and would want to do something a little bit different to add their signature to it and therefore ruin what was already perfect. Now there is, and, and to be fair, one thing that I think I really think One Piece got right is there's a lot more source material than eight episodes worth. So this show also understood when to lift a scene and a storyline directly from the source material and when 
to hold back, when not to, right? And so you can't do 20 years of anime in eight episodes. So the point is the connectivity that got you from actual recreated scene to recreated scene was done really well and really believably. And you really get kind of caught up in the story as they're going along. The other thing they did, which I think, you know, Marvel has kind of forgotten is the casting. The casting of relative unknowns who just absolutely personify the part. And by the way, they did it with, you know, since people, it's a focal issue, they did it with plenty of diversity and they never once mentioned it. It just is. Like Inyaki Godoy, who plays Monkey D. Luffy. Like Monkey D. Luffy is a Caucasian character or Asian to Caucasian character in the anime. It's not a person of color. But you never once think about the fact that there's a person of color playing the part. Why? Because he owns the part and he just is the character. And when you see the anime and you see him, you're like, this kid studied every tick of the animated version of his character and brought it to life. And I don't care what his background is, it's perfect. And I felt that way about the main five characters. They clearly like each other. There's clearly great chemistry. I think the youngest is 20 and I think the oldest is like 29. So like, there it is, right? Like that's a sweet spot of casting for Marvel and DC that, and I bet you some of these people will wind up doing that. I think actually the guy who plays the chef, Taz Skylar is a Spanish actor. I'd never seen him before. I, I literally thought someone had drawn a comic book character and like made that into a human. When you see him, he's on episode five, his jaw and the way he looks physically and the way he moves, I'm like, this, uh, this can't be a real human being. Like this is literally something like drawn on a page that they turn. These people are just great. And they obviously, um, the most, um, the guy who plays Rowan Orozoro, uh, McKenyu, he's actually the son of Sonny Chiba. So he, to your point, we were talking about this with Blade. Guess what he is? He is a highly trained martial artist who already was an expert with two swords before he got the part. So when you see him use the two swords and then you see him use the third sword, understand that he already knew how to do that. So they weren't messing around when they brought him in. And he plays a part great. And his fight scene, he has two awesome fight scenes in this season that are better than I think anything we would have seen from her, Charlie, if you'll be quite honest. <laughs> but yeah, they have this true spirit of like how to wield a sword and make it fun. I'm, uh, you, you got me curious tomorrow to watch it. I, I do def I definitely have some work to do, some due dates and deadlines to, but I'm gonna make some time to watch a couple of episodes tomorrow or later. Um, and when you after you're done watching, if you want a Cliff Notes version, just go to YouTube and and look for. You can just punch in like One Piece anime versus live action. There's a bunch of people that have now gone through and done the side by sides. So you can actually see, if you want to skip around, you can see some of the classic scenes that they literally recreated. So Matt Owens and Steven Maeda, like two massive thumbs up for, for this show. I can't wait for, for season two. I'm, I'm so invested. But for, for those of you who have watched um, uh, one, one Piece, let us know in the comment section below what, what your thoughts are on the show. And uh, should Marvel and DC take notes? Uh, and, these, and these are little nuggets that Brian and myself have been discussing for many, many years already in terms of how some of these things, or what the approach should be. Oh, I don't know if you've seen Castlevania Nocturne. I have not, but I was meaning to talk, text you about it because I saw the trailer for it. I was like, oh, this is Pablo. This is Pablo's next show right here. <laughs> this is perhaps the best animated series I've ever seen. This is, this is, this is must TV. Oh, snap. Look at that. <laughs> this is must TV. <laughs> this is must see TV. Uh, you gotta watch it. I, I I think I saw it in like a day and a half. Um, uh, because I think the episode the episodes are quite long. I don't know. It was just amazing. It's it's like watching. It's not like watching Andor, but it's appreciating the writing. And that's what I like most about the show. It's appreciating the writing, and the 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 moment of anticipation and it's just well done man 
It's just those guys over there. I, a plus. You gotta watch it. You gotta watch. Well, there you go. If you're fed up with Marvel and DC right now, we just gave you <laughs> two recommendations. Yes, yes. Castlevania, yes, yes. One Piece. It'll make you feel yes. better. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Do yourselves a favor and do that. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comments section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the No Gym Report. The show goes on. Yeah!